Recently, there was an attack on the Andoria system where Ja'ulu's mycelial weapon opened a hole into the network and began to poison it. However, we got some answers on how the weapon works. It needs spores mutated by Huck Peng radiation to function. And now knowing this, the holographic commander Paul Stamets has put together a list of known colonies of Prototaxites Stellaviatori. A research team is analyzing spore colonies in the Donatu system. Their facilities are on a small moon there, but it's practically defenseless. Considering recent events, the Alliance wants to change that and soon. They want us to go to Donatu and deploy defense satellites in orbit around the moon. Hopefully that will discourage anyone looking to harass the researchers or steal the spores. These missions are a collection of patrols that can be undertaken repeatedly to earn rewards in Star Trek Online, and each one is centred around securing a known spore colony from Ja'ula, and I'm going to assume that they take place over around a week or so, considering all the travel that we have to do. In-game time is best ignored in MMOs. For the most part, all the spore drive research had been classified, so the colonies of this fungus had been mostly ignored by the general community, unaware of their potential use. Now that has changed. The Donatu system has been the site for several Klingon Federation conflicts over the years, but not recently, and the location of missions in STO, unfortunately some of which are no longer in the game. We're in luck. We made it here before Ja'ula. Let's get to work. Starfleet is studying a spore colony on the planetoid ahead. It's a scientific research facility. No weapons, shields only. If Jaula or her lackeys come to visit, they'll be sitting ducks. Fortunately, we're here. You know, it should have at least some weapons. We're carrying some defense satellites in the shuttle bay. Deploy them at key defense points and Jaula will be in for a nasty surprise if she decides to raid this spore colony. I'm surprised they weren't already here, but there's probably some sort of treaty preventing their deployment or something. However, complications arise. Alachi fleet dropping out of warp. They're arming weapons. Oh, Alachi natives of the mycelial plane. This I didn't expect. I guess we're fighting then. These Ilachi vessels are unlikely the ones that have either been driven mad by Jula's interference, or the same faction that allied with the Iconians and are still looking for an excuse to fight us. Darren's comments have pointed out yes, there are now at least three factions of Ilachi to contend with. We take out the attacking Alachi ships and move in towards one of the moons of Donatu 5, where our research base is located. If we look carefully, we can see the artificial lights of a city structure on its surface. Okay, let's have a look. Sensors online, weapons active, shields at full. Good. Defense satellite Alpha is open and ready for business. May it never fire a shot. We've got more work to do here, let's get the next satellite in place. The defensive satellites are heavy phaser platforms and look as deadly as they are, with their red glow and sharp angles uncharacteristic of Federation design. We have a total of four of these satellites to deploy around the circumference of the moon, but throughout this mission Ilachi vessels warp in to attack us and we have to fend them off. Honestly, I feel kind of bad, House Mokai is the enemy, and these guys are pretty much just caught in the crossfire. Heads up! An Alachi fleet just dropped out of war! I knew this was too good to be true. Let's get Satellite Gamma online while we can! I was afraid of this. More Alachi. Uh, the bonus is that the longer we are here, at least, the more satellites we've got deployed and armed on our site, and these heavy turrets are nothing to sniff at. Alright, we have one satellite left to deploy. Let's get to work. They're hitting Satellite Alpha again! It seems they've shaken up tactics somewhat and are not attacking us directly, but the satellites now. Oh, great. Another Alachi fleet! They're going after Satellite Delta! Getting readings from Satellite Gamma. Looks like an Alachi flagship. During this skirmish, the heavy phaser turret goes down and, well, we're going to have to repair it. Nonetheless, we emerge victorious. Getting lots of good data coming in from the satellites. Looks like they're green across the board. 
Donatu Station sends their regards. There's a few dozen people down there who will sleep a little easier tonight, thanks to our efforts. Good. Hopefully the Alachi won't return, or House Mokai for that matter. The Alachi, the Ferengi, the Orions, and hey, let's not forget about Jaula. Anyone tries to make a play for the Spore Colony, they're going to regret it. But I digress. As much as I'd like to stick around and see what the researchers are up to, there's more work to be done. We fix up the last turret and plot a course out of the system while Stamets writes up the next location to defend. I'm picking up a distress signal from the Kern system. Kumarke is there with a Lucari research group. They were studying spore colonies in that system, but now I'm thinking they're fighting for their lives against House Mokai. We should give the Lucari a hand while we can. Well, well, this will be a good opportunity to check in on how the Lucari fleet is growing. Kumarki is hardly alone out here anymore. The Kern system is along the Klingon Federation border and home to a gas giant. It is around this planet, Kern 3, that we find our fellow explorer in a spot of bother. Hi, Kumarki. You busy? I just thought I'd swing by. Good to see you, my friend. As you can see, I'm in the middle of a firefight once again. That said, I can't think of anyone I'd rather have at my side during such an ordeal. Ah, you seem to be holding out pretty well and you've got reinforcements with you, but I'm glad I got here in time. As am I. In spite of our mission being scientific in nature, the rogue Klingons attacked us all the same. I suppose they thought we'd be easy prey. I'm happy to say their logic was tragically flawed. <laughs> Lucari tech is pretty advanced. We can ponder their motivations further once the shooting stops. For now, I believe we should focus our attention on putting a stop to their attack. You read my mind. Also, is that a rift over there? Yeah, we're going to have to take care of that too at some point, I guess. So, during the battle, we fight alongside the Rescarver, the first Lucari vessel made with exploration and scientific endeavour in mind and captained by Kumarki pretty much to the Lucari as the Enterprise is to the Federation. However, it is joined by four other Lucari vessels, the Nakan Class LSS Jalit, with its circular shape looking like a Federation saucer section or classic UFO design with the telltale neon glow of Lucari energy patterns. The other two are Dranur Class scout ships which are currently caught in the rift. More on them in a minute. We did it. Sensors are clear for the moment. I'm afraid I have some bad news, however. Oh, let me guess, it's got something to do with that big ripply rift. Two of our ships were studying the nearby rift into the mycelial network when the Klingons attacked. While I'm still showing them on sensors, they're not responding to our hails. I fear they're in danger. Not responding to your hails, eh? They'll respond to this one, I'm sorry. You patch up your ships, I'll go check them out. That rift's unstable, we need to hurry or those ships won't make it. Klingon vessels are warping into your position. We fend off more House Mokai vessels while we spot the two stuck Lucari ships, their crescent hulls buffeted by subspace currents. Thank you for coming to our aid. Some sort of energy surge erupted from the rift and hit us. We lost main power, sensors, everything. If you arrived a few minutes later, it would have been over for all of us. Needless to say, any assistance you can offer us now will be greatly appreciated. Stand by, Captain. We've detected the problem with your engines. We'll get that repaired ASAP. You should be able to fly out of there under your own power. Truly the blessings of Lucar are upon us this day. Thank you. Our sister ship was hit by the energy surge as well. I will not abandon the food or her crew before returning to safety. That's convenient, because I wasn't going to ask you to. Don't worry, we'll see to them next, too. Let's go. Our systems are coming back online nicely. My thanks to you and your crew. At the risk of looking impatient, may I suggest we move to safer surroundings? There's no telling when this rift will surge once more, and then all three of our ships will be stuck like Gretloons in a snare strip. Yes, I know exactly what those are. Under the circumstances, I think it'd be a good idea to use what we've learned so far and close the rift up while we can. The longer it stays open, the more chances we have of pissing off the Alachi, or the Josep, or a roving tardigrade. You see where I'm going with this? You are a Saki bastard, aren't you? If you feel that's for the best, well, so be it. We'll watch your back. 
while you make that happen. This should take just a moment. We've still got the readings from our last events, and this all looks very similar. That's one less rip to worry about. Let's regroup with Kumarke. However, before we can, more bad news. Bad news, I'm afraid. Klingons are approaching our position. The Klingons have a new trick to deploy, it seems, an alteration to their Klingon computer code from the 23rd century perhaps, but it is rather annoying in that it infiltrates your computer system and forces you into full impulse while disabling your turn rate, so you end up jetting out of combat. Let's deal with the stragglers, shall we? I think that was the last of them. It appears Ja'ula and her forces have been stopped once again. Though she is quite determined, they may well return here to pursue their mischief once more. Well, if she does, I'd say we have this place on lockdown, and we've done even more damage to her fleet. Honestly, it's beginning to feel like she has more ships now than when she first arrived through time. Indeed. In the meantime, we'll remain here to complete our research. Safe travels to you. And to you, Captain. Next time we meet, could it be without the phaser fire? With another system secured, we set our course to leave and head for the next on Stamets' list. Although I have to say it's impressive seeing how far the Lucari have come. Working alongside the Kentari, their shared space fleet is growing. Wasn't that long ago we were helping them on their first few steps out of their system. Starfleet's been reading a lot of Klingon ships operating near the Briar Patch. Normally, I wouldn't be too concerned, but there's a spore colony in there. If any of those Klingon ships belong to House Mokai, then Ja'ula might have a harvesting operation in there too. Dangerous as it is, I think we need to go see what's going on inside the Briar Patch. This one is a little different, whereas the last two had us securing two sites we knew of against House Mokai. This time, we suspect we're going to be ousting her forces from one. The Briar Patch is the location of the Baku homeworld and a hazardous collection of radiation and unstable gas pockets. Not a great place. However, it was also the location of a prison colony owned by the Sonar and used to house Klingon prisoners by agreement around half a year ago. We busted Martok out of there. I'm picking up signals from automated harvester units. It's Mokai Tech. They're processing spores here. Hmm. Looks like they've placed the harvesters on several asteroids. We need to shut those down. Now. Must have been hidden by the interference. I'm picking up a lot of Metreon gas pockets out there, too. If we get into a fight, watch your fire around them. One hit can set one of them off, and the resulting explosion could be deadly, even to a starship. Oh, I only know that too well. I'm betting the Mokai will come after us after we take out their tech. Stay sharp. To begin with, we can pass over the majority of these dense clouds just to be safe, but soon we detect the harvester right in the thick of the Metreon gases, and we'll have to descend. Shutting that thing down will be easy enough, but I'm concerned about the radiation it's been emitting into the spores. I'd like to neutralize that before taking the harvester tech offline, if you don't mind. Letting it linger could lead to serious side effects within the mycelial network. So, following the specialist's advice, we neutralise the radiation before disabling the harvester. The complexity and understanding of this task is relayed to us via a rather annoying minigame. Watch it! Mokai attack ships just dropped out of cloak! Well, first things first, let's get out of this Metreon pocket. We engage the enemy ships in battle, and as with the last few times we have battled in the Briar Patch, we keep an eye out on the Metreon pockets for our sake, as well as seeing if we can ignite any that the Klingon vessels fly into. Hate to say I told you so, but I did, and here we are. Our smoke knows we're here, and it won't be long before we have more of them to deal with. We better get to the next harvester and shut it down fast. Yes, numerous explosions do have a tendency to destroy the element of surprise. I'm not sorry. That was fast. Predictable, but fast. Sensors are clear for now. Let's deal with that first. Two down, one to go. Hope we can deal with it before Jaula sends more of her friends to make sure we don't. 
Klingons. A lot more Klingons. We're in trouble. Alliance vessel, we are here to assist you. Looks like the Alachi are on our side for a change. So this time the Alachi that show up are allied with us. I guess these are the same faction we met within the network, the ones who are cognizant of the threats that House Mokai poses. The threat has finished for now. All clear, let's shut down the last harvester before the Alachi get nervous. That was something. Still debating whether it was terrifying or gratifying or both, but it was something. We'll want to keep an eye on this system until the whole Jaula situation is dealt with. I wouldn't put it past her to send more ships and more harvesters once she thinks the coast is clear. So we'll notify Starfleet Command to keep a scout stationed here just in case. We can't afford to rely on the Alachi to defend areas in our territory for us. At the same time, we can't afford to antagonise them. It's going to be shaky, a balancing act, trying to maintain peace with the Alachi, especially with how fractured their culture is right now. Nevertheless, we chalk today up for a win and make tracks to the next system. There's a Starfleet distress signal coming from the Kinger system. The USS Birmingham was investigating pirate activity in the area while on patrol. There's a large concentration of spore colonies in that system. If pirates are in the spore business now, we have a new problem to deal with. We better see what's going on there. Pirates, it's hairy mud all over again. So, next up is the Kinjar system. This system is mostly avoided due to the ambient radiation from the star's collapse 6,000 years ago. The radiation is less of the dangerous to organics and more of the mess with the old compass type. If by compass, I meant computer mainframe and sensor systems. Looks like there was a fight here recently. I'm not picking up any House Mokai ships on the sensors, though. If they're here, they're under cloak. It's infuriating that such an old cloak is so effective. We spy the damaged Andromeda-class USS Birmingham and close in to ascertain its status. There are other ships in the system too, so we won't be doing this alone. Good to see you, Admiral Cabret, at your service. As you can see, we're dealing with an unexpected breakout of hostilities here. Aye, oh, I can see. It looks like you got pretty messed up. W what happened here, Admiral? We came here to determine the status of a rather unusual variety of spore. As we were getting our bearings, a Ferengi marauder dropped out of cloak and unleashed hell. A Ferengi Marauder? Wait, with a cloaking device? I mean, Marauders are pretty powerful, and with the element of surprise... Afraid so. Fortunately, the Carter and Shergat were able to respond before the Ferengi finished us off. Once they arrived, the Daemon pursued the better part of Valor and went back under cloak. Now that you're here, I believe the Ferengi will cut and run, assuming they're still out there hiding. Yeah, four Federation vessels swarming all over the system. Uh, sorry to interrupt, but I'm reading low-level radiation coming from a nearby asteroid. I think your Ferengi is out there harvesting spores, Admiral. Or they could be complete idiots. Alright, let's go stop them. Take the Carter and Shergat with you. The Ferengi will think twice about attacking a group of ships. And you might be able to put an end to all this without firing a shot. You know, it would be nice to fix one of these without resorting to hostilities. The Carter is ready to assist you. Lead the way, and the Shergat will follow. Reading a single Ferengi vessel, Marauder class. They've decloaked! Move to intercept, raise shields, lock weapons, and prepare to hail them. I thought I made myself clear to that woolly-faced Starfleet Admiral. This salvage is mine and mine alone! Now run along before I'm forced to damage that pretty ship and take it as a pride. After all, even a damaged ship of that class will fetch a fine pile of latinum. Daimon Madron, it's been a while. How comes whenever we meet you're on the wrong end of my targeting sensors? I thought you liked to gamble, look at your odds. Stand down. That's what you get for doing your own thinking, friend. 
Allow me to show you the error of your ways. Margarine, please, it's been a busy couple of days. Fine. Red alert. Leave enough of their ships for salvage. I'll be under cloak. Oh, he had allies just out of system. That's why he was being so cocky. Madron's allies turn out to be a squadron of, who else, Mokai warships. We dispatch the aggressors, and then opportunity strikes. Well, there's good news and bad news. Which would you like to hear first? Hit me with the bad news, so let's end on a high. Bad news, the Ferengi managed to harvest a spore colony from the asteroid before we arrived. He's got more than enough to make our lives difficult if he sells to Ja'ul. Which he probably will. And what's the good news? The Ferengi ship just dropped out of cloak, and by the look of things, they're suffering a full propulsion system breakdown. No impulse, no warp, thrusters only. So, how do you feel about taking those spores off their hands? I mean, it would be the right and just thing to do. And it would also piss off Maldron, so I'm all for it. Ah, before you start, let me remind you that I have what you want. And it's one button press away from disintegration. My ship might be a mess, but my personal phaser works just fine. Energize. You... you just... you beamed out my spores! Not one, not some, but all my spores! I'm ruined! Oh, I, 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 I uh, don't suppose you're interested in a very promising business opportunity on Ryza? Beachfront property? Modern, you're under arrest. We've got company, angry company. They're targeting us and the Ferengi. Oh, for hail them? The spores, Madrin! Hand them over and your face! You treacherous! I won't tell the Gorn we have the spores if you don't. <laughs> oh no, unfortunately. We need to keep the Ferengi alive. We successfully drive off the Gorn. The nerve of some people! Do they not know the 16th rule of acquisition? A deal is a deal! Ah, but you're not a barbarian like those, those... Never mind. You've got class, I can tell. Aw, oh, thank you, Maldron. It's glad to be acknowledged. You're still under arrest. Now, don't be so hasty, my classy, well-armed friend. Before you haul me off, let me tempt you with a one-of-a-kind offer. That Rhysian timeshare I mentioned earlier, plus a full barrel of Trania. 2386 vintage. <laughs> That's easily worth my weight in Latinum. Well, I don't like Trania. Helm, move us into tractor beam range, ops, grab him, let's tow him out of here. Oh, I have a tunic worn by James T. Kirk, mint condition, no rips. Then I doubt it was his. The Birmingham is ready for action, and not a moment too soon. It looks like Madrin's treacherous friends are coming back for a rematch. Right, I'm seeing them closing in too. Prepare to repel them. I can honestly say I had nothing to do with these ships coming to kill us. They're doing it all on their own. You uh, uh, aren't going to let them kill me, are you? I'm helpless. You have to protect me. Shut up, sit tight, and hope that a stray photon doesn't hit you. Eventually, we managed to repel the Gorn pirates. Well fought! Well fought indeed! They'll think twice about coming after us again. I'll let Alliance Command know what happened here today. If Ja'ula or any of Modron's friends try to harvest the spores in this system, we'll make sure they have a nice welcoming party waiting for them. Excellent, and I presume I can leave Modron with you? Modron's on his way to a Federation holding facility. 
We will make sure he faces justice for what he's done here today. Rest assured. Your work is done here. We'll take care of the wrap-up. Cabret, out. So, it appears that Mudrin was attempting to harvest his own corrupted spores in order to sell them to Ja'ula's house Mokai. As to why there are pirates involved, well, maybe Ja'ula has found allies? Goodness knows she's not finding them amongst the Empire. The Klingons think House Mokai forces are up to something in the Imaga system. I understand there was a problem with a planet killer in that system a while back. Interesting. Oh, where was I? Right, Imaga. In addition to a lot of debris and the ruins of this planet killer, there are spore colonies there. And House Mokai is probably harvesting them, so we should put a stop to that real soon. Imaga! Oh, that's been a turbulent system for a long time. In the 23rd century, the sonar seized it and had to be driven out, but in 2409, the Klingon Bavat attempted to utilise a doomsday machine, a planet killer against the Federation, and in the process, destroyed the primary planet of the system. That was two years ago, in-game, and episode 13 of the story series. This burnt-out cinder is all that remains of the planet, still flaking and hot to this day as it continues to degrade, while the irradiated ruins of the Doomsday Machine itself drift among the debris field. Getting some unusual readings from the spore colonies in this system. They're mutating at an accelerated rate, absorbing and emitting some nasty radiation as they do so. Aye, that would be the Hakpeng radiation. It was used to destroy the Doomsday Machine, and it's probably still lingering. Nasty stuff. Right, well, the spores are growing on the debris of this Doomsday Machine, which is where all of that radiation is coming from. This is a problem. The radiation is bleeding into the mycelial network through the spores. It'll cause serious damage if we don't deal with it soon. Well, that's why you're here. Recommendations? Hate to say it, but we need to cull the mutated spore colonies before the damage to the network is too great to reverse. Well, I understand. At least that'll be one less place to keep an eye on when we're done here. We do not want to get hit by those radiation pulses. Trust me. We can see the rhythmic bursts of intense radiation from the ruins, and we'll have to time our purging of the spores with the lull in the radiation before it peaks and damages us. Unsurprisingly, however, House Mokai ships decloak and attack us while we're in the system. Fortunately, they get caught by the initial radiation blast. With most of the ships severely crippled by the radiation, the last one appears to crash into an asteroid, where we help it to its end. So, for reference, this is how much damage it does. I got a little too close and thought I'd document it anyway. Needless to say, we dash in after a pulse, neutralise the spores, let's deal with the next spore colony before the Mokai send reinforcements, and then go to full impulse to get the hell out of there before the next pulse comes. Stamets' prediction of more Mokai ships comes true, and we're going to have to deal with them before we can attempt to disable the next cluster of spores. I don't want to risk being hit by that radiation whilst in combat. Destroy these fools and take back what is rightfully ours! This time, when more Mokai ships arrive, Ch'ula is with them. The IKS Akar. We will rid the stars of these honorless rebels for the Empire! However, the Klingon Empire is at hand to him. Yeah, the newest Klingon arrivals are on our side. Oh! Right, yeah, of course. No, uh, most of the Klingons in this century are actually allied with the Federation. To, to a pretty hefty extent. This is probably your first time meeting them, though, Stamets. We will fight another day! And as usual, Jaula cuts and runs. Much to the jubilations of Captain Corrin in the IKS Border School. The rebels are crazy. Let us dispose of this Bakhtar and be done with it! <laughs> When the phaser and disruptor fire quietens, Captain Corrin hails us to congratulate herself and us on the victory. Glorious! Did you see how Ja'ula ran like a scalded targ? She is not Klingon, and a disgrace to the memory of her honourable brother! We shall remain vigilant. 
If the coward Ja'ula shows her hideous face here again, I will finish what we started here this day. I will send her, screaming, to the gates of Grethar. And I'll be there holding them open for you. Not that you couldn't hold your own door. I'm not saying this isn't an analogy for me. Getting, I, ha, I'm going to shut up. Is it me, or do most forms of Klingon justice ultimately end with screaming in Grethor? You know, never mind. I think I know the answer to that. Look, as long as House Mokai isn't polluting and destroying the mycelial network, I'm good. Then mission accomplished. That was the last location on your list. For today, at least. Great. Let's get out of here. So, one thing that's not really been addressed until just now was the Klingon Empire's stance on the return of House Mokai, and, well... Corrin just pretty much demonstrated it. Yes, to put it bluntly, the Empire is not fond of the way House Mokai is currently conducting itself, not only in jeopardising the Kitimer Alliance, but just for how they're acting. So, with that final mission done, we have locked down and have eyes on every location Stamets knows of to collect spores, corrupted or otherwise. This should stall Ja'ula's plans considerably and buy us time to plan our next move which we'll pick up in the next part of this Star Trek Online story series. Thanks for watching. I've been Rick and I hope to see you next time as we continue to explore its ever-changing narrative. Until then, thanks again and goodbye.